folks I want to uh, thank you for joining me on this video I don't even know where, where to begin uh, this is a safety video this is a uh, public health video uh, this video might actually save your ass especially if you're a traveler anywhere around the world in the tropics or you live in the tropics or you live especially here in the Philippines I'm going to talk about some statistics later on but basically today I'm going to talk to you about roundworms intestinal parasites um, specifically um, ascariasis which is caused by the ascaris something 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 I don't have my fucking notes in front of me for the medical terms uh, but basically parasitic worms, the round worm, or they call it colloquial, colloquially, colloquially the uh, giant round worm. And it sort of looks like a strand of spaghetti. So that's what today's uh, travel slash safety slash save your ass video is all about. And I'm just right down from my house. I'm just kind of overlooking the river. Just taking a look at the river kind of slow moving there's an old ass jet ski that ain't worked since 1982 and, and folks i don't want to get in trouble with youtube but it's kind of a sad story there, there's a dead dog down on this ledge and the reason i think is because that's kind of blocked off over there and there's a drop off over here and that poor dog must have somehow got down on this ledge and just damn uh, dehydrated himself and died. I feel sorry for him. Probably nobody saw him. Maybe they heard him from the other side. It was probably at night. We got these, these kids here climbing down these little ropes. I was wondering what this strap was for. That strap right there is tied to the ground with a nail. And they use that strap to get down there. And then they've got those thicker straps, look like from a come along, to get down to the water's edge. So it looks like these are the fishermen. That's our, our little uh, net right there. Ah, okay, so they got a couple. All right, that's, I'm paying, paying attention now. He got a uh, pole back there, it's got a little homemade paddle. And it looks like these young gentlemen are going fishing. They may have just stole stole the uh, the video. They're the stars of this video. And I'm shooting on a GoPro Hero 8, so I don't have any zoom capability. So you got the uh, the older Kuya on the front. Younger brother sitting there riding shotgun. <laughs> and it looks like that's just the ferry all right i got it now so there's a there's a rope and a makeshift bamboo ladder over on their side so this is just a quick way to cross the river so they don't have to go all the way down to the main road i guess i should have figured that's what it was I'm used to seeing the little the little boats, you know, you give them five pesos each and somebody will row you across, but let's see how these young men get up that rope. And this river actually has uh, relevance to the video that I'm going to be talking about, about uh, parasitic worms and, you know, specific specifically today the round worm uh, because 
with pretty much any river in a region like this you know you've got a lot of raw sewage being dumped into the the rivers now these children right here they've lived here their whole life and a lot of the things the bacteria they've, they've built up tolerance tolerances to but it doesn't matter how long they lived here they're just as susceptible to roundworms the locals are as you are as a foreign guy this isn't where you can build up a tolerance um, to the worms so you know by these kids crossing uh you know crossing the contaminated waterway that's one method uh, for them to pick up the larvae from the roundworm because it's transmitted by the the oral fecal route and a lot of times through the oral soil route because the eggs of this damn thing can live in the soil for weeks i don't know even years okay so there's your entertainment for the video these guys basically repel down here and they scale that cliff over there yeah i just feel feel sorry for this poor dead dog that somehow or another got on that ledge and uh couldn't get off it looks like he passed away on that ledge there's just there's nobody here maybe they heard him barking from over there i, I don't know anyhow poor dog all right so just to look at the river when you're in uh any you know tropical subtropical region of the world and then uh, you know you add the tropics you add the heat and you add poor sanitation you're gonna have a high prevalence of intestinal parasites and again right now i'm in the philippines but this is just one example however when i quote you some statistics off of uh some government websites you're going to see that the philippines has a very high prevalence of certain intestinal parasites so if you're coming over here if you live here if you have kids here you need to fucking pay attention all right i know you don't sit down and research this shit nobody watches the cdc shit um but I'm gonna to try to make this both informative and entertaining at the same time and just share my experience. Why the fuck am I talking about this? Well, why do you think? All right, it's the same way I shared the hand, foot, and mouth disease experience with you because I want people to learn from my hardships and uh, my battles and my failures and everything else. Not that's a failure, but just for example. As we go along, I'll explain it. But right now, where am I going? I'm on the way to the pharmacy to pick up uh, pick up a, uh, a drug, and I think it's called shit. I already forgot. When I get to the pharmacy, I'll tell you what it is. But it's a uh, it's a drug to basically uh, it's like a dewormer. It's like in the U.S. when you deworm the dogs, well, you got to deworm humans. So I'm going to get the dewormer. I do remember the dosage. It's either uh, 100 milligrams twice a day three days or you take a single dose of 500 uh 500 milligrams and that pretty much gets rid of them maybe not all of them if it's a very severe infection but they respond very quickly uh to the drug so without further ado i'm headed over to south star in uh, barrio barreto to pick up pick up my, the medication and i'll pick it up pick up the video when i get there Unless I see something interesting on the way, I'll certainly share that. So thanks for joining me on this little video, my friends. Again, coming to you live from the Philippines, Subic Bay. the mark welders right in front of you pay attention don't get a flash burn mm. folks it is hot today took that little boat ride if you saw that video it wasn't hot we had a little cloud cover but this beautiful blue sky with the sunshine today 
it's warm so i'm walking over here on this side of the road with the uh with the shade going on but i love walking i love taking these walks move to a place like this southeast asia you end up just exercising so much more just end up doing a lot more walking okay folks i'm going to start this out on uh, wikipedia i'm just kind of using that as the base but what i'm talking about is ascariasis it's caused up by the parasitic roundworm ascaris lumbricoids and pay attention to this in 85 percent of the cases the infection has no no symptoms in other words you really don't know if the uh, number of worms are small Children are most commonly affected and it can cause poor weight, weight gain, malnutrition, and learning problems. How does the infection occur? By eating food or drink contaminated with the eggs from feces. So this is sort of the, um, the fecal oral route like I've talked about on, on other videos. Uh, somebody who has the, the parasite, they take a poop, it contains the eggs, the larvae, gets in the soil and I believe I've read that it can li they, they can live in the soil for weeks, months, uh, a long time. But uh, you pick it up by, you know, coming into contact through water, drinking water, um, contaminated soil and ingesting those larvae. So it's, it's the uh, fecal oral route or one physician described it as the fecal soil route and so you can go to wikipedia all of these uh, links are going to be down in the description so you can reference what uh, what i'm talking about here so ascariasis is caused by the ascaris lumicoid roundworm now they call this the large roundworm or the giant roundworm because this damn thing can grow in your intestines up to 14 inches in length that's what it looks like right here on the right and i've already done enough research that's a female roundworm because the ends are just kind of pointed this is a uh, i guess classified under the uh, group of neglected tropical diseases which are very common tropical regions asia africa central you know the americas basically folks if it's an area that's hot and there's an issue with sewage um these, these things thrive okay and we go go on down and i'll just go to the next one here but those are a couple references now let's get to the cdc they have a great infographic that shows how you pick this stuff up so these adults live in the small intestine of an infected person. And this is the female here, this is the male. You can tell the male adult worm because he has a, uh, a, uh, like a hook tail, a curved tail. This female can lay up to like 200,000 eggs per day. So every time a person is pooping, they're just pooping out hundreds of thousands of eggs. The larvae, which you know, again, if they're not sent to a proper sewage treatment plant, um, they're going to be everywhere. And in places like this, like the Philippines, you know, anywhere tropical uh, with, without a proper uh, sewage treatment program, these things are everywhere. Okay, so let's start how it works here. So uh, the infected per person poops it out. Now, there's two types of eggs, unfertilized, which will not uh, under, undergo any further development. But if the eggs are fertilized, in other words, if there's a male and a female present in that person's small intestine, you have a fertilized egg, it's going to start growing no matter where it's at. And you have a, an egg with larva, and somehow or another, you're getting it in your mouth. Uh, whether you're drinking contaminated water that's why you know you go places they tell you don't drink the water <clears throat> when you leave the west there are very few places 
that you can drink the tap water. So you don't drink the water for various reasons. Most of the time it's bacteria, but in different countries there are concentrations of the, these larvae in the actual water supply. Now you jump into a river filled with sewage and poop, there's, you know, there's no telling what the concentration is. Um, either way, you get this uh, somehow ingesting it, the embryonated eggs. And this is what's uh, crazy about this particular uh, parasite, the way it gets back into your small intestine. It kind of like takes a tour of your body. So you got these tiny larvae go in through your mouth. Now, where's number five? Okay, and then the, the hatch larvae, they enter your bloodstream, bloodstream and migrate to your lungs. So you're not, so even though this thing is living down here, it doesn't get there by you eating it and it going straight to your intestines. What this thing does is gets in the bloodstream and it migrates, I believe, to uh, actually through your heart, through the right chamber. It goes through one chamber of your heart and ends up in your lungs. So this thing is taking a tour of some very important parts in your body. Now once it sets in the lungs for a while, they're actually coughed up. And when you cough them up out of your lung through your trachea, you're actually re-swallowing them. And so it's kind of it's kind of crazy how that works, but you're coughing it's like you have a respiratory infection and you're coughing and you actually swallow, they go back down and that's when they get back to your small intestine. Um, right here's your small intestine. This is the large intestine. But right here they get to the small intestine and that's where they live and start to grow and uh, mate and start to lay eggs. So the way these things get in your body, folks, it, it, ain't, it ain't no joke. And again, this link is down there. Um, humans and pigs are the major hosts for uh, Ascaris. And so I think they're talking about, uh, you know, if you're around pig farms and stuff like that. But uh, you, you can read up on that. Now let's go over to the image gallery and I'm gonna warn you right now. Um, if you're if you're sitting there eating, watch this video later. And if you got a weak stomach, don't watch this. There you go. That's all the the legal cheese I'm serving your ass. Okay, you've been warm. All right, these are just pictures of the eggs. And so, if you're, you know, looking in poop, I guess if you look close enough, you can maybe see these eggs. And there they are hatching. But let's get down here to what these things look like if they're in your intestine. And this is the scary part, and that's why you should pay attention to this video and talk to your physician about um, what I'm talking about. This is what they look like. They're like a pinkish color. Sort of looks like a strand of spaghetti with, uh, with pointed ends. There's a close-up in, and that's the male right there because he's got a hooked tail. And I can tell you right now, that's a female. That's a female. Well, you can read it right there, but it's pretty easy to spot them. And that's just probably relevant to doctors. I don't, I don't, uh, and I'm moving right along. Okay, why am I doing this video? Well, number one, I'm a world traveler. Number two, I spend a lot of my time, most of my time now in the Philippines. And so I wanna show you this map about why I'm doing this video and why it's important. Okay, these are Ascariasis deaths. Now this isn't talking about uh, infections, there's another one, but I thought that this would be more um, dramatic and, and basically make you pay attention to this. These are deaths per million persons in 2012, and the yellow is zero to one. Obviously the more red it gets is the worse, right? So you can tell that people do die from this. It's, uh, I don't want to say rare, but it's, it's not very prevalent. It's, you know, when those worms build up and cause some type of uh, bowel obstruction, and they can also, what they say, go rogue. 
they can uh, basically go walk about and they get into other systems like the pancreas that's when people die and, and it's a surgical intervention so you kind of look at the hot areas all right yeah i mean you got the middle east africa central south america from mexico these are actual deaths and you've got the yellow okay now you come on over here to the dark red where are we sitting right here okay right there i guess you're seeing this cursor but right there is the philippines so if you are living in the philippines you visit the philippines realize that it's the same uh, deaths per million that you're comparing to places in um, Africa um, this area of Central America right here India and, and folks th these are all places that are that are densely populated they're in hot areas and a lot of times they don't have good um, sewage treatment or wastewater removal now so i kind of showed you that and i'm and i'm breezing over this but let, let me show you this too this is um off the ncbi national institute of health anyhow u.s website the government website the links down there but if you take a look at the philippines this is a study of children under 24 months and you can take a look here go to the philippines the sample size was 544 children less than two years of age now this is a ascariasis and the t is this other one and h is hookworms but we're, we're concerned with the a so the prevalence was 25 percent and held 75 percent on the other but 25 percent of the of the children under two years old had this and here's another sampling here out of children under four years it jumps up to 77 percent now if you just compare that that prevalence to china sierra leone malaysia okay nicaragua all these other places indonesia the philippines leads the way according to this chart right here so uh, do your own uh, interpretation of this particular chart, but it, it basically in short terms tells you that this shit is very common here in the Philippines. So how do you get rid of this stuff? There's different types of drugs, but mabendazole is, uh, from my research, is what physicians in the U.S. and here in the Philippines typically prescribe. So let's just go over to quick dosage. We'll click on here for ascariasis. It's 100 milligrams, whether it's chewable or, uh, or in a liquid form. It's 100 milligrams twice a day for three days, or I think in a more severe case, they'll just give it to you 500 milligrams as a single dose. And a lot of times they're gonna have a follow-up dosage to uh, to make to make sure that it's taken care of now i'm not going to show you too many graphic photos but basically when you take this drug if you have if you have these uh, uh it's diagnosed by a stool sample folks the, the the crazy thing about this when you take that drug and you have some of these worms this long well it doesn't matter how long but if you have some of the worms these, can, these things can leave your body by crawling out your asshole or even crawling out your mouth. If you let this thing go long enough without getting dewormed, you could literally have one of these long ass things crawl out an orifice of your body. Again, I don't wanna get, uh, if you Google this, you can see some, some very graphic photos on the internet that they posted You know, in the interest of uh, of uh, of learning i'm not posting them here but there's pictures with with people with these worms coming out of their mouth their nose their asshole i even saw one kid coming out of his belly button and it's because it's left untreated i think here in the philippines they, they try to deworm the kids they give your, your your children the deworming medicine once a year 
but I'm gonna tell you right now after learning about this I'm looking I'm looking at saying I'm, I'm gonna do this every six months now obviously I'm not a doctor I'm not telling you what to do and I'm gonna discuss this with my kids doctor but I think they need to be dewormed every six months you don't want to give these things that much time to grow and 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 progress into adults especially being here in the Philippines I just showed you 77 percent and I'm also going to probably you know do the same thing I'm gonna do the same thing for myself and my kids if the doctor says that's okay at least every six months uh, we're going to be dewormed we're going to be taking this mabendazole deworming medication uh, that's just that's just the way I look at it now if you are a a world traveler if you take a trip here to the Philippines I seriously recommend that when you return to your home country you discuss this with your uh, physician and show them this video and there's also a link to a video down there done by a physician in the US don't take my word for it I'm not here giving medical advice I'm not an, uh, I'm not an attorney <laughs> and I'm not a doctor but there is a video with uh, down in the description that was made by a physician in the US and it's, it's a very good video and he describes this very well uh, basically what I've done but he's a physician and I'm not I would discuss this with, with your doctor when you get back to your home country and say hey I just got back from the Philippines this is a very common occurrence there what do you think about me taking uh, mabendazole just to be sure and they're probably I would say they're gonna say hell yeah you should now folks you know I've been traveling the world now for about a decade just fucking roaming you know like a free spirit doing what the hell I want to do eating what the hell I want to eat drinking um, you know just not really giving a damn I've talked about this before back when I talked about travelers diarrhea or I talked about hand foot and mouth disease and I, I think you know in the past 24 months especially the past 12 months this decade of you know I was lucky I was lucky I didn't catch anything with the way I was traveling and the way I'm, you know, living my life. Now, I did catch a lot of things, but <laughs> not related to the topic at hand. I mean, shit, I, you know, there's no, there's no shame in my game. So when I talk like that, I, I mean, I've, I've caught the clap fucking, I don't know how many times, probably a world, I'm probably the world record holder about catching the clap, chlamydia, gonorrhea, whatever. That's part of life. When you live life like this, <clears throat> you live life like, like I've lived it. That's, that's part of it. And <clears throat> as I get older, I'm starting to slow down, not because, not because I'm getting old, but because I'm getting tired of that shit, you know? So I, I uh, haven't caught the clap in a long time. So I'm happy about that. You know, that's kind of a chapter that's closed. Uh, but, you know, all this shit that's, that's uh, prevalent here in the tropics, it's been catching up with me. It's been catching up with me the past year, past 24 months. <clears throat> and those were, aren't, haven't really been my reckless years. You know, just going around you know, drinking with people, sharing a single glass with 20, 30 dudes at a table, because a lot of places you go, that's the way they do it. I mean, I remember one time in Afghanistan, they had this homemade hooch, we were down there near the Pakistan border, had this homemade hooch in a, looked like a plastic trash can. And we had a, like a tea glass, and people were just dipping in this big vat of homemade I called it Pakistani hooch whatever the hell it was and just you know drinking it down and then pass the cup around 15 20 30 dudes there 
And when you needed some more, you just dip down in there. There's no such, I mean, nobody gave a fuck about double dipping. Even at the meals, you know, you're just grabbing, obviously with your right hand in that environment, just grabbing food off this community plate of rice and food, just, you know, people licking their fingers. So I've taken a lot of risk and been reckless and free. And, you know, it's starting to catch up with me. It's time to pay the piper. You can't, you can't get lucky every time. And so hopefully going into 2020, I'm gonna have a better, a better year. But I can tell you this, going into 2020, I'm a hell of a lot more educated about what's, what they call these neglected tropical diseases. In other words, <clears throat> they're just diseases or bacteria or parasitic worms that are common in the tropics. Nobody's making a huge effort to eradicate this stuff. It's everyday life. It's part of everyday life. When I talk to my, my kid's pediatrician here about it, uh, you know, he's just, he's like nonchalant, not, not that he don't give a shit. He's just like, Hey man, that's, that's, you know, part of life here. You know, we have to, every year we deworm the kids and you know, what we talked about is we're going to do it every six months instead of every year. And me and the old lady are going to pop a pill too. It's just a little small pill for the adults. One tablet, 500 milligrams of what I keep forgetting the name, Mabendazole. And we're going to do it every six months because we are living in the tropics. We are living in the Philippines, which out of all many tropical areas, many hot areas, the Philippines is, is a high prevalence rate percentage of, you know, people uh, having these parasitic worms. And it's just part of everyday life. You know, and do people die from this stuff? Yes, they do. Typically, no. Typically, no, you pop the pills, you know, the, the worm's gonna come out within, you know, within a week um, without complications. But people do die from this. Like, uh, if you watch that video, highly recommend you watch the video the links down in the description where the doctor talks about occasionally these worms go rogue in other words they leave what's what they're naturally just hanging out in your gut and they go to, to another one of your organs and I just read an article where um, you know various patients have complained of headaches and they go in there and realize there's a tapeworm uh, there's tapeworms in their brain uh, so this shit can be serious. It, it can be serious. It can be serious with your digestive system if left unchecked. I just look at it like this. I've been lucky that I haven't had this shit up until now, and now I'm paying up. I'm paying up on all this shit. I'm educating myself on all this shit, and it's kind of reverse. It's like what you would think would happen was when you first start traveling, you start catching all these ailments and then you educate yourself. And after two or three years of traveling, you know what to do and what not to do based on bad experiences, you know, learning from your mistakes. Well, for you know, almost a decade, I just didn't give a shit. I figure I'm gonna enjoy my life. I'm gonna go exploring. I'm going where I want to go. And if, if it happens, it happens. I'll deal with it. Um, and I'm not stupid. I mean, I. <clears throat> You know, I know a little bit about medicine. I used to be in the medical field. But until you have these individual ailments happen to you, you are not going to research them thoroughly, where you totally understand, you know, how you get infected, um, the life cycle of these organisms. And so now I'm getting pretty well versed. And that's what I'm trying to do here. All I'm trying to do is share with you uh, my experience with this uh, parasitic Roundworm, very common here in the Philippines. Usually easily treated with a single dose of mabendazole for adults. They give a, um, a liquid for children and it's basically, uh, you know, I give them some in the morning, 100 milligrams, and it's 100 milligrams at night. It's just like a chocolate flavored uh, liquid, no big deal. And then usually the worms will pass um, and your poop, but that's not guaranteed. I mean, you look at the videos and you'll see worms coming out of people's nose, their damn mouth. One kid got it coming out of his fucking belly button. This shit ain't no joke. 
So a lot of you guys on my cooking shows, you want to hit me because I cook the meat very well done. You come to my kitchen, you are not going to get served any rare meat. I promise you. That damn thing is going to be char broiled. I cook meat one way. I'm a veg well, I cook everything one way. And that's very, very well done. You come to my kitchen, it doesn't matter if I'm cooking here in the Philippines or in the mountains of Afghanistan. I promise you, if I cook the food, you are not getting sick from my food. Because I'm cooking that shit. Yeah, it, uh, my steaks may look like a piece of fucking shoe leather. <clears throat> but there ain't no goddamn parasites. There ain't no bacteria in there. Because they're all dead. You take that steak or that pork chop, you know, and you don't leave it on there long enough because you like your pork tender and juicy and all this shit. Go right ahead, motherfucker. You go ahead and fucking just barely fucking uh, cook that pork chop. Read this fucking shit right here. Read this shit with those links that I, you were looking at on the video a minute ago. How this particular worm is very closely associated with pigs and stuff. Go ahead and fucking eat that pork chop that you didn't cook real well. And then when you're shitting fucking worms this long out your asshole, don't say I didn't warn you. You've been warned. You've been served. And I know you guys, like I said earlier, you don't watch this shit on CV CDC. Most people don't watch that shit. It's boring. But maybe if I'm slapping you in the face and the way I'm talking and the way I'm, you know, my tone here, this, shit, this is common shit you got to pay attention to. Cook your damn food. Cook it well. Don't fucking, don't take, why would you take a chance on eating fucking raw meat? Oh, but it's delicious. That's the way steaks are. Okay, that's fine. But realize you're taking a risk with your health. Just realize that. I'm not getting or have gotten this from my cooking. It's from other sources that are just, I don't want to say outside my control, but really it's everyday life in the tropics. Everyday life in the tropics, you can be bombarded with these things. So why bolus yourself with a half-cooked piece of meat in your own fucking kitchen? Makes no sense to me. That's why we're here, because man fucking harness fire. They started cooking this shit, killing this bacteria, killing these parasites in the meat, and people started living longer. We didn't fucking harness fire years ago so we can make a fucking, uh, you know, a goddamn medium rare. Oh, let me get an extra rare steak. No, motherfuckers, that's not... That's not the way it works. So I will continue to cook the way I cook. Hey, hit me in the comments about my, my charbroiled meat. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but folks, I hope this video is informative. Uh, discuss this with your doctor. And show him my video, or better yet, show him the physician's video. Because he's going to look at me like I'm some you know drunk, crazy, crazy man. That's fine. Show him the physician, uh, his video, very informative. Matter of fact, just, just click that link and watch his video after this video. And then you will be pretty much educated on Ascaris lumbricoids, Ascariasis, and the life cycle, how this gets in your body, and how, how you get rid of it. He basically takes what I've presented in this video and he puts it together very professionally. And that's what I recommend and shout out to uh, the good doctor for doing that video and everybody at the shit, it's like university is somewhere. Because it hits the, the nail right on the head about what you need to know about roundworms. Now folks, I'm going to conclude the video and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I usually don't do second takes. Everything you see on my channel is just one time through. That's the way I do it. I, 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 don't, I don't do retakes. Uh, but in this video, I, I did have some more footage in there, and it was a little, a little graphic, you know, of the of these of these worms and stuff. And I said, you know what, I'm not I'm not going to include that. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking that part out because you can Google it, you can see it for yourself. How far you want to go into that rabbit hole? Um, so I, I did I did edit some of that stuff out in case you're eating or whatever, you know. Sitting there fucking McDonald's eating. No, no reason for, uh, for you to see all this shit unless you, unless you want to go down that rabbit hole. So I want to thank you for joining me on this safety, this travel, survival video. And I'm not 
trying to uh, scare you where you leave, you won't leave your house, you don't leave your basement uh, over in the west. But in hot climates, you know, this is everyday part of life. You know, not just here. Any, just look at the map. Anywhere where it's hot, you've got these tropical diseases. You need to educate yourself about them. And when I talk about my uh, survival kits, I'm going to do a video about my perfect survival kit. And I got to add mabendazole to that survival kit now. I don't know why I never added it before. Uh, I'll do that video up in the near future. The perfect world travel survival kit. And I'm not trying to sell you nothing. You put this shit together yourself. But I'm going to tell you what the perfect survival kit is. Whether you're traveling or you're stranded on a uh, deserted island, I'm going to show you what I would take. Okay, folks. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Talk to your doctor about this stuff. And uh, hope you're having a great day wherever you're at in the world. And peace out, my friends.